Hello guys, hope you're all doing well. Today we are back in the A6M50, this time going 187-1 and one on Iwo Jima. And before you ask, Silk, where's the other maps? Well, I have recordings for that kind of stuff as well, and they're going to be coming very soon. I just really wanted to get this gameplay out to you guys, because it was an absolute slap for a match. As you can tell by the score, this game was very high in kills per minute, about 5 KPM, and I want to use this match to try to explain what I do to get a really high KPM in the planes. If you look at my stats here, I've got a 2.4 KPM on average in all the planes in this game. So, what does that mean? Well, it just means that I'm really consistent. And in this video, I want to try to show you guys exactly what you can do to increase your KPM and become a consistently more effective pilot. Anyways, before I start the video real quick, I've been streaming over at Twitch at the link on screen right now. It's been an absolute blast growing my community, so if you're interested in catching some of the action live, I'd love to see you there. To find out when I'm streaming, you can use the countdown on my Twitch page, or simply join my Discord or follow my Twitter, where I'll post an alert for every time I start streaming. Anyways, with all that out of the way, let's get to the gameplay. So the first tip I can give you guys for absolutely fragging out in the planes is to know your limits and when you can push them. For example, what I like to do at the start of the game a lot is to push the enemy much more, so I'll get in much closer. I'll even use my cannons as you can see right here. This is a very risky move, it's something that you don't see out of many Zero pilots, but early in the game, especially on the first sector when they're just storming the beach, they do not have time to pull out a Flieger. This is when you want to exploit that. You want to go in with your cannons, you want to get in 3 kills per strafe, you know, like, go as hard as you can, try to push them as hard as you can until they start pulling out Fliegers. Once they start getting comfortable, you know, playing around ammo boxes like you see right now, this is when you want to start turning it down. The next thing we're going to talk about is target prioritization. Now, this is on screen in bold because it is very, very important and very, very simplified in most people's minds. And I haven't really delved deep into it, but this is the target priority that most players or pilots will have. Something like that. Now, this right here, this is my target prioritization. And it's not absolutely complete in this one image, but this does show roughly what I do. So, you might notice that there are no numbers. There's no order by number. It's all dependent on the exact situation I'm in. Let's say like a player is farming really hard on a bomber, then that is the most important target. You have to get that out of the sky, otherwise it's going to kill your entire team. Anyways, getting down to it, when it comes to fighters, I like to take into account firstly the direction. So if it's flying towards my spawn, then I can probably leave it for a second and often farm a little bit of infantry and then get it. Because it's not going to go anywhere anytime soon. If it's flying away and it's in low health, for example, I will go for it instantly because I don't have a large time window to get that kill. The next thing is altitude. If a plane is really high up, it's often got a good advantage for a dogfight and it can swoop down on you at any moment. So if there's a plane, you know, flying towards you at a very high altitude, I'll take that dogfight every time and make sure he doesn't get the jump on me. The next thing I like to consider is the variant of fighter. So if it is a dogfighter variant, i.e. the white Corsair or the white Zero, you know that they have better cannons, they're going to be better suited for most players to take you down. Most people don't spec out the bomber variant, the A6M2 or the 1C Corsair, to kill fighters, so they're not really that harmful, whereas the white variants of the planes, those are actually legitimate threats. The next thing I like to consider is, is it damaged? So if it has some smoke coming out of it, you almost always want to go for it because that's going to be a really quick and easy kill. And then the final thing I like to consider with fighters is how many friendly versus enemy planes are up, and you know, who's flying bombers, who's flying fighters. So if my team has a plane advantage, let's say it's a 2 on 1, then I'll often go and kill the last plane and try to stagger their spawns, i.e. if one plane is down and one plane is up, then I'll wait for a while for the down plane to almost spawn, and then I'll kill the, the living plane basically. So they always have like a 1v2, and this makes it really really hard for the enemy team to claim air superiority again. And I won't do this all the time, but if I really need to get my team air superiority, I'll do something like that. Next thing to look into is the AA tank. So the first thing is Pacific versus European theater. Basically the Pacific AA is absolute trash and you just don't have to worry about it. But you should only prioritize it if it's being used by a good player to farm infantry and your team's having a hard time. Always help out the team if they need it, just depends on the context I guess. If it's a Euro theater though, the AA is very effective and it should be pretty much at the top of the priority list after fighters, depending on what the fighters are doing. If they're farming and you're farming harder than them, you can usually leave them alive and just out farm them. Anyways, the next thing is the stationary AA, and the first thing I like to look at is the location. So, I like to ask myself how far away it is from the area I'm trying to farm, and then if it's on high ground, then that's more of a priority. Because obviously, what I like to do a lot is, sometimes when I exit a strafe, I exit low, and if he's on high ground, then he can see me over like hills and stuff. But if he's in the valley or something, then I can exit low over the valley and I can escape easily. 
And then sometimes objectives actually have AAs on them. So if you're going for an objective and there's an AA on the objective, that's obviously way more important than an AA in the enemy spawn that's nowhere near you. When it comes to infantry, I like to ask myself if they're in a power position, for example a flank. Do they have fleegers? Are they near an ammo box? Because if they do, then they have unlimited fleegers. And are they near our runway? These are all questions I'll always ask myself. Basically, flanking enemies are danger for my team. I want to get rid of those. If they have fleegers, again, you want to tread carefully. If you get too close to that area, you're going to die. If they're near an ammo box, again, I like to destroy the ammo box sometimes. I do that a lot on Iwo Jima just to make sure they don't have as many fleegers. And if they're near our runway, that's basically top of the priority list. Get them out of the way. This happens actually in the game in the background. I don't know when it happens, but they do start to push towards our runway. And I make sure to wipe all those enemies out at all times. Now, when it comes to tanks, there isn't actually much of a priority here. However, I will always ask myself, firstly, if they're in a power position like infantry. So, if they're on a flank or if they're on a good high ground position where they're picking up a lot of enemies, that's obviously going to be a, a worthwhile kill. Then it comes to the variant, whether it's a player spawn versus map spawn. You can often tell because you know where the map spawn ones are and you know how many there are. So, you can basically just tell, like, if it's one of the ones that spawns on a flag, it's not going to have any upgrades and specializations, so it won't be as effective as a player spawn tank, which is more of a priority. Then the player in the tank also matters. So let's say you're versing Nispel in a tank. That is an insane priority. That is the top of the priority list. Whereas, and also if you're versing a hacker in a tank, right? They're insanely good as well. So those are way more important than just versing some, you know, three kill Andy sitting on a hill in a tank. That's not very important of a kill. And then the health of the tank also matters. So you'll notice whenever I see a tank that's on about 80 HP on this map, I'll go strafe it because that's a one pass kill. If the tank's above that amount of health, there's no point going for it because you're just going to have to take too much time to kill it. And that's just going to cut into your KPM and your effectiveness at the end of the day. When looking at bombers, it's more or less the same. So the first thing I like to look at is, is the player farming my team? So if it's a bomber and he's, he's going 50 and 0 or something, you just go take that down. It's an easy kill for you. However, if it's just some, you know, player leveling up his bomber and he's not doing anything, it's actually really helpful and it's like I always do. If he's not doing anything, just leave him alive because... The worst thing that could happen is you let the bomber, you know, you shoot it down and then some tryhard hops in a fighter and starts dogfighting you the whole game. So, you know, if, if it's doing nothing, there's no harm in leaving alive and just having the enemy team with one useless player. Then the variant also matters, so I like to look at whether it has a tank cannon or a stuku cannon, or the 37 mils basically. Both of those weapons can actually really, really quickly deal with a fighter plane, so if it has those, that's obviously more of a priority than if it didn't. But that's basically when it comes to bombers, you know, are they being effective, then take them out. If they're not, then leave them alive. And that's basically it. Anyways, I think that just about covers target prioritization. If you guys want to see that image, it will be pinned in the general chat of my Discord. And yeah, I think target prioritization is extremely important, and it's one of the reasons why I think I make a pretty effective pilot in this game. Anyways, the next thing I want to talk about is timings, and there are a few timings that I think are really important for flying the plane. So the first one is the rearm timing. So you want to know roughly when you have to turn back towards the fight. So as soon as your, your rockets are ready to go, you're basically firing them off. Now this strafe you're seeing right now is a bad example because I was rearming and repairing and all that. But usually what I'll do is when the circle is about three quarters complete on this plane, and it has the resupply upgrade, but as soon as it's about three quarters complete, then I start turning back towards the action. And by the time my nose is pointed towards the fight, my rockets are ready to go and I'm pretty much firing them off and then pulling off. So that's basically the rearm cycle for the zero, that's what I tend to do. But there are a few more timings that you should kind of have in your head. So the first one is plane respawn timings. Now in this game, I do think respawns are accelerated depending on the ticket count sometimes. Uh, it depends on the game mode of course, but in general, you want to be thinking about, you know, 90 seconds for a plane spawn. So as soon as you kill a plane, you want to start this little clock in your head and you want to be thinking, you know, 90 seconds from now, there'll be another plane. And not necessarily like that important anymore now that dogfighting is dead. But guys, if you play Battlefield 4, this kind of 90 second timer is ingrained into your head. You literally know when to turn around and when to not face your back to the enemy spawn. And having that habit from Battlefield 4 has actually helped me a lot in Battlefield 5 in terms of not losing public dogfights. I very rarely give someone the advantage on me. And if I do give someone the advantage on me, it's half the time on stream just to kind of give a defense example because... This timer is again ingrained into my head and it's something you want to be thinking about and get ingrained into your head as well because it is very very helpful to be able to time your own respawns. To take another step further into uh, galaxy brain piloting as we'll call it, you can start to time more than just the plane respawns. Back in Battlefield 4, like when I'm playing the attack jet, 
I'm pretty much timing both jet respawns and making sure I never give my 6 first spawn as soon as the timer is pretty much done. And it's all approximate, it's basically in my head, it's it's about right, it's not always 100% correct and it will get me killed very rarely when I miss timer. But I'm also thinking about the boat respawns, 60 seconds each, the AA respawns, 60 seconds, and then on maps with tanks then you want to be thinking about tank spawns as well. Obviously this is more of a Battlefield 4 tip than Battlefield 5 but it still will can apply and on maps will like for example Rogue Transmission on BF4 if you guys know it, you want to have the tank spawns down in your head so you don't let them get under the dish. But that is getting a little bit sidetracked here, but in, when Battlefield 6 comes out, let's just say, you want to be doing this. I, I bet planes will have, you know, a set spawn time. I bet tanks will have a set spawn time in Battlefield 6. And if they do, this is a massive thing that you can do to get ahead of the game. The next thing I want to go over is dogfighting. And while I don't actually recommend going out of your way to dogfight in-game, because it just, it will get you killed all the time, dogfighting is a very important skill to have when it comes to KPM. Let's say if I was a very average dogfighter and a plane came on my 6, I'd probably be dead firstly, but let's say the plane didn't even end up on my 6 and we had an even fight. That fight could take 5 minutes if I have no idea what I'm doing. But if I'm an experienced dogfighter, I can get rid of that guy in 20 seconds and I'll be back on the farm. I'm not going to go into dogfighting in this video, it takes way too long to explain, but I'd recommend looking at like BF4 and BF3 dogfighting tutorials along with, you know, practicing with a mate. If you can get on the enemy team to a friend who's about your same skill level and you guys can just practice some dogfights, you'll learn a lot from that. Especially versus someone who's just a bit better than you, that's where you're going to get the real, real improvement. As far as dogfighting on the channel goes, I do have a video planned with one of the best dogfighters in the game. His name is Bandit. He's an insane dogfighter and we've already fought before and he can destroy me, guys. I killed him a few times, but... He really does get the best of most fights. And we're going to be doing a dogfighting double vision video. So you guys can see exactly where the blind spots are. I'll try to explain it as much as I can. And hopefully I can get some input from Bandit as well. And this should be an insanely good video. Probably within a month this will come out. Because it will be a lot of work. Anyways, if you want to see that video, be sure to hit the subscribe button. You, trust me guys, you do not want to miss that video. Anyways, another really important thing is settings. And it probably gets a bit overstated in its importance. But I would still say that settings are very important. And if anything, they'll just help you spot enemies that little bit faster, that little bit easier, and your game will just run a lot smoother if you have all the right settings. Now, I'm not going to cover settings in this video. It'd probably be an hour long if I did, but I do have a 20-minute video absolutely dedicated to settings, and I show you exactly what I run inside and outside of Battlefield to have exactly this experience you're seeing here. I literally hide nothing in this video. It's all out there on YouTube, and I'd recommend, you know, looking into it. It will help your game run a lot better. Look, all I'm saying is I have an i7 8700K and a 3080, which doesn't really matter for this game because it's entirely CPU intensive, and I'm getting these frames. So, look, the, the results do speak for themselves. If you want to see what I do, watch the video. If not, then, you know, it's all good. You guys might have your settings absolutely figured out. Now, the last thing I want to go over, really, and I've talked about this in terms of other planes, but your positioning also really matters. So, firstly, you can think of the AA as kind of like a force field. Like, everything around the AA on your team, you'll be safe around that area. You don't have to worry that much about planes. So when I can, I like to farm within my AA's reach so he can deal with any of the planes that come for me. It's not because I can't dogfight, it's just because I don't want to dogfight. I'd rather just help my team out and smash the ground. So that is generally what I like to do. I like to fly within where my AA's can see. So if I do get into a dogfight, he can help with it. He can discourage it and I'll get the easier kill. Now, the other thing you want to do is you want to be thinking about, you know, the enemy plane spawn. So if all the planes are down and you can actually get a better angle on the enemy infantry by doing this, you can fly towards their spawn, you can put your back towards their spawn, and as long as you're timing their spawns in your head, you can get a few, you know, cheeky little strafes there. You can get some kills and then you can just go back to your spawn before they even come back. And especially in this game where a lot of the takeoffs are actually uh, runway takeoffs, even if an enemy plane does take off in the runway, you can see it coming and then you can just fly right away back to your AAs. And that is an effective way to fly sometimes, especially on this last point on Iwo Jima. Sometimes the only effective way you can get a good strafe into infantry is actually from coming over the water as the Japanese team. So what I like to do here is, you know, try to do it as soon as the enemy planes go to rearm even, I sneak in over that area, get a quick strafe in, and then fly straight back to my spawn. And these are little things you can definitely use to just get a better angle on the infantry. And again, on the defensive side of things, playing around your AAs, it will help you a lot. Anyways, I think that does cover it for most of the stuff that I like to think about for KPM. I mean, there are slight nuances here and there, and there are some little things that I'm not probably remembering, but 
Let's be real, I could write a book on this shit, so I'm just going to keep it simple here. These things in this video are the things I think are most important and obviously for more tips. And if you guys want to, you know, chat with me about this kind of stuff, go ahead to twitch.tv slash silk2g in the live stream. We're always talking about this kind of stuff. We're just chilling out as well, having a good time, and I'd love to see you all there. Anyways, that's probably going to be it for the video. Let me know what you all thought of this one by leaving either a like rating or a dislike rating. And if you want to leave a comment on what you may have liked or disliked as well, or just a random comment, I do read every single one and I do respond to as many as I can. So again, thank you guys for all tuning in and I'll catch you all on the next one. I'm going to leave this one to the gameplay. It's still high action from here, trust me. And you know, this game just keeps on going. So again, hope you all enjoyed. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.
Thank <laughs> you.